Hello everyone, welcome today to Mike's SAS Tutorials. Today I'm going to be covering a special topic lesson on macro programming. Macros are generally considered advanced programming technique and many students tend to be afraid of them. However, I'm going to show you today that they're nothing to be afraid of and in fact, on the contrary, they're one of the most useful approaches to accomplishing routine or repetitive tasks very easily. Before I begin, I'm going to need a, da a SAS data set to work with, so let's jump right in and create a very basic data set to work with. Let's start by creating data main and I'm going to make three variables, id, variable1, and variable2. Let's insert some data for them, 1, 2, 3, uh, 2, 4, 5, 3, 6, 7, 4, 8, 9. Nothing too fancy, just something very basic to work with here. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is do a proc contents on the data set so that I know what I'm working with. If I select all of this and run it, Oops. Run it. We're going to see that we have here four observations, three variables, and our variables are here ID, variable one, variable two. So it's very uh, general and straightforward. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to create a macro variable using the percent let statement. Whenever you see this percent symbol at the beginning of a statement, you should think of macros and I'll tell you why. Most of the macro programming begins with this percent sign. Um, when you're not necessarily working in a macro step which is similar to a data step or a proc step, you're going to be working in a kind of global sense using this percent let. Percent let basically lets you create some name for filler code that you use somewhere else. Let's say I uh, create a variable here, a macro variable called new var, and I'm going to make it called var3. Now when you think of macros, you should be thinking of the find and replace tool. That's this one right here, where you can find some text, let's say var, and replace it with some other text, let's say var3. Well, when I create a macro variable, what I can do is I can call this new var later on and let SAS re think of that new var as really being var3. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to see without seeing so let's go ahead and use the uh, macro variable in this case in practice. So I'm going to make a new data set I'm going to call it new main and I'm going to set our old main and I'm going to create a new variable var3 that's equal to the sum of var1 and var2. Now I could just type var3 equals var1 plus var2 and if I did this it would run perfectly fine and in fact if I go ahead and show you that it'll make a lot more sense. Let's see what the data looks like using proc print here is our original main with the two variables or sorry three variables ID variable 1 and variable 2 with four observations and all the variable information the value information there and if I do the same thing now for new main and I select all of this code you'll see that it's going to create a third variable here that's just going to be the sum of the two so var1 is 2 plus 3 equals 5 and so forth. Now that was the old method but I want to now use this new macro language so I'm going to use something called the ampersand operator and call in new var. When I bring in this ampersand new var SAS is not going to see this as new var with this ampersand in front it's going to view it as var3. It's kind of like if I took this I copied it with edit, copy, and pasted it right in place of that code there. Now you could be thinking, well, that's kind of like a nuance. Why would I do that? It just seems easier to type in var3. But imagine you're going to be using uh, a lot of repetitive coding, and you don't want to keep, in, keep typing in var3 or var1 or var2 and you just want to put in a placeholder and then just change the placeholder somewhere else. 
that's what macro is macro programming is really about so if I select this percent let I've created this macro variable and now let's say I change this to var4 and reran our new main we run that one more time and okay there it goes var4 and we can see 5 9 13 17 all as before but the variable name is different if I change the variable name to let's say let's say summed variable and I reran this percent let statement and reran this data set now you can see of course it changed it so rather than having to go into this code here and change this every time I just have to change it this one time in my percent let so that's creating what we call a macro variable using this percent let and then we recall it using the ampersand operator now that's uh, a pretty simple and straightforward example and it doesn't necessarily get into the real power of macro programming just yet now what we've done here we've created a variable that was really just the pr the sum of two previous variables but what if you wanted to do um, a lot more than just that you wanted to create uh, several what we call transformations well let's make a real macro let's get really into the nitty-gritty of macro programming when you make a new macro and macros can be thought of as programmers functions we start with this percent macro statement we give it a name let's call it transform this and we're gonna transform X within what we call a macro step well I, I call it a macro step I'm not sure what the official name for it is you can think of it as being like a data step or a proc step as one block of code where when you run this function this macro function it's going to run everything that is in the inside here all this FSAD ADSF stuff so let's say when we say we want to transform something we're going to take X right we're going to use this ampersand operator to call in the macro variable X and we're going to make it equal to var1 plus var2 and instead of just calling it X we're going to add on some information using this dot we're going to call it underscore sum and I can make let's say a ampersand x dot underscore difference equals var1 minus var2 when I make this macro code you'll notice that there's no proc statement here there's no run statement here so this kind of code would have to go within a data step let's call a new main 2 and set in our old main and now I'm going to use this percent transform this var 3 when I run all of this code and print it it'll make a lot more sense oops new main to run okay let's look back at what we did we created a macro step and made a new function called transform this we said that we want to transform X to make a sum variable and a difference variable which is the sum of var1 and var2 and the difference of var1 and var2 well if we made a new variable var3 then var3 underscore sum will be the sum so let's go to our output and you can see here we created var3 sum which was the sum of these two variables here our var3 difference is now the difference between them and we did not necessarily have to create any uh, new variable var3 because our macro, macro function did it for us. 
we can do this again, let's say copy paste for a new variable. And if we run this, now we also have var for sum and var for difference. It's very simple, very straightforward. Now, making a sum and difference variable is a lot easier using this macro coding, but it's not necessarily very intuitive. What if we wanted to uh, make several different transformations for, let's say, um, some statistical needs as though we were going to use a transformed version of our variable? We can take ampersand x and add in this underscore squared and then take x and square it. Let's say we do the same thing for cubed, let's underscore cubed, equals ampersand x raised to the third power. And let's make an inverse just because these are very common uh, transformations used for statistics. An inverse transformation equals 1 over ampersand x. When I make these transformations and take in transform this var1 let's say. When I take in all this code now what's going to happen is SAS is going to create three, three new variables the square, cube, and inverse transformations of variable 1. And it did that all for me with one step. It was very, very quick. Now, when you're asking yourself, what is the whole point of all of this? Think about what it would have taken to do the same uh, process for, let's say, 20 different variables. Let's say we had variable 1 through variable 20. Well, we wouldn't want to copy and paste this code 20 times when we could just replicate this one line 20 times instead. Um, it makes a little bit more sense if we show with another example. Let's say we wanted to do our um, proc contents that we're used to seeing. Let's say, where are you? Let's say we wanted to make a macro to run the contents on any data set. And we begin using our macro statement as before and let's call it contents of and let's say some data set name DSN. We're going to close it using this mend contents of and close that and we're going to say proc contents data equals ampersand DSN. When I use this ampersand DSN SAS is taking this macro variable and replacing this call of that macro variable with whatever is in the parentheses there. So if our data set was main and I typed in main in the parentheses, it would replace this entire section with the word main. And let's say we want to run that. Okay, so I run it to store it in the in the memory and then I call it using this percent sign contents of main run. And there it goes, it's run a proc contents on work.main. Now I have another data set called, what did we call it up here, new main2, and I can get the contents of that using our contents of macro that we created and running it. And you can see here that there were six variables using these kind of transformed, this transformation system. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it doesn't get more complicated than that. If you want a way of doing, uh, making a quick macro out of something you've done before, let's say we do proc print data equals main and run, we can say, we can take that exact code, add on top of it macro, let's call it print this, data set name, close it with the m end, macro end, print this. And since this is the part of the code that we're going to replace every time, we just replace it with this ampersand dsn. 
and I'm just going to select all of this and hit the tab key to tab it over so it looks nice and pretty and whenever I select all of this and run it I can now use our new macro print this dataset is main and I can do print this dataset is new main 2 and select all of that and now we can see our two outputs were created the first time for our original dataset main and the second time for a new main 2 without having to type proc print for dataset main, proc print for dataset new main 2 and so forth all over the place. So macros are a very useful tool it's very easy to get bogged down by them but if you just practice and think of them as a find and replace method that can help you shorten the amount of code you have in your um, overall file you can see that it's actually really pretty simple and really pretty useful okay so thank you and have a good day